Hello and thank you for praying the Stations of the Cross with us here at Transfiguration of the Lord Parish. Today we will be using the images of the Stations from St. Mark Church in Attleboro Falls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The First Station Jesus is Condemned to Death We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus stands before Pilate, accused of crimes he hasn't committed, and he who is without sin mutely accepts the blame for the sin of us all. Trust allows this for Jesus, full trust in God's plan, the promise of resurrection and salvation. This was the light that led him through the darkness. Jesus Help us to see your acceptance of blame, not as weakness or resignation, but as the ultimate example of self-sacrificing trust in God. Give us that same trust as teachers so that, when we see wrongs we do not perpetuate, or messes we did not make, we step in to offer your healing, comfort, and hope. The second station, Jesus is made to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Scholars generally agree that Jesus carried the horizontal beam of the cross, which weighed about 125 pounds. We can only imagine the pain he endured as he walked, the beam chafing his flesh torn back. Steadfast acceptance of God's will allowed him to put one foot in front of the other. Jesus, we avoid adversity. We fear humiliation and run from suffering. But you chose to take up the cross, a symbol of humiliation and suffering, and did so with steadfast acceptance. Teach us, we pray, to carry our burdens with the same grace, remembering that you will never leave or forsake us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At the time of Jesus' death, crucifixion was the punishment reserved for the lowest of society's low, the prevailing method employed to publicly dishonor a person. Jesus' brutal flogging was part of the practice and as it sent his body into shock from pain and blood loss, the likely cause of his fall. Consider Christ's humility, then. God made flesh, succumb to the ultimate display of human denigration, and assume the physical vulnerabilities of the human body. Jesus, teach us your humility today. Fill us with your spirit, so that in our schools and classrooms we may become conduits of your self-giving love. Through your example, may our weaknesses make us stronger, more accepting of the weaknesses of other, and increasingly humble. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Face to face, Jesus and the Blessed Mother meet. Jesus is covered in blood, sweat, and spit, bent under the weight of the cross, subjected to angry shouts of hate. And Mary, 
experiencing every mother's worst nightmare, that her child will suffer harm, feels the sword pierce her soul. Moving with fiercely protective love, she offers her son the little she can, the comfort of her presence. Jesus, thank you for the gift of Mary, who models perfect love for us. In our love for you, make us fiercely protective of you, and help us remember that when you are present to those who are hungry, tired and sad, those who are difficult, stubborn and forgetful, we are loving you. Christ, she saw with thy blood failing all her anguish not availing saw him breathe his very last. The fifth station. Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon from Cyrene is pressed into service on his way in from the country. It's an unexpected detour from his plan for the day. Scripture doesn't tell us why he is appointed for the task or how he reacts. The point, it seems, is simply what he does. He serves a man in the hour of his greatest need. Here, we remember that, as with Simon, our acts of service, expected or not, appointed or not, eagerly shared or not, carry great weight in the kingdom of God. Jesus, thank you for this tiny glimpse of Simon from Cyrene, who shows us the cosmic impact of service. Please give us the eyes to see when, where, and who we can serve, and the strength to step into that call, even when it causes a detour. Show us, too, how to let others help us. By your Spirit, help us to share our service generously and accept it from others generously. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As Jesus stumbles down the road to Golgotha, Veronica takes her veil to gently wipe the sweat and blood from his face. In return, Jesus leaves the imprint of his image on the cloth. He who receives me receives the one who sent me. Jesus meets her kindness with kindness, blessing her with the imprinted veil, a lasting reminder of God with us. Jesus, through the example of Veronica, open our eyes to the suffering many of our students endure. By your Spirit, help us comfort them in your name, reminding us that, in every such action, you are with us. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Earlier in the Gospels, we see images of Jesus as the center of attention. Some ascended trees to see him, others reached out simply to touch his garments. Still others dismantled a roof to lower their sick friend down to Jesus. Jesus had once been surrounded with love and acclaim. Now he is rejected and scorned. Jesus, give us the grace to identify with those who are rejected. Inspire in us compassion for the student who is cast aside and the colleague who is marginalized. May our love of you become a force that heals and unifies. Let me feel your grace the 
88th station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A crush of people surrounds Jesus as he drags his cross through the streets, jeering, cheering, yelling people, and grief-stricken too. Encountering the women, he turns to them and shares a hope-filled message. This is not the end of the story. Those who judge Christ worthy of death will, in the end, meet the judgment of God. There is hope. Jesus, God of both justice and mercy, thank you for the hope you embodied as you shared with your heartbroken followers, even on the way to the cross. Keep us mindful and ready communicators of your promises. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As he nears his place of execution, a third and final fall begs the question, why would Jesus get up? Why would he summon his last ounce of energy to deliver himself to the pain of the cross? Falling three times, getting up three times, dying on the cross, rising from the grave, Christ shows us that he can transform weakness, failings, and death into the glory of self-gift. Jesus, give us eyes of faith. Allow us to see light where there appears only darkness, and life where we can only sense death. When our energy flags, inspire us to confidently get up and continue our journey toward home. The Tenth Station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Though artists through the centuries have depicted it otherwise, crucified people in Jesus' time were stripped of all their clothes. It was one more step in the process of ultimate humiliation. Imagine the embarrassment of being so exposed. When we or our students are subjected to humiliation, we can be confident of this. Jesus knows how we feel. Jesus, our wounded healer, thank you for so fully embracing the human experience. May we be ever grateful for all you endured on our behalf, and may we pay it forward, dedicating our energy, no matter the cost, to the protecting of the dignity of others. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Keeping in mind that the word excruciating literally means out of the cross, we reflect on Jesus and the excruciating pain he suffers as soldiers pounded thick nails through his hands and feet as he completely surrendered any natural human desire to protect himself, Christ bore this pain, our pain, as a supreme sign of his overwhelming love for all of God's people. Jesus on the cross, you embraced the pain of generations of sinful men and women. As teachers, we often see pain and suffering behind the eyes of our students. We pray that you will guide us by your example of profound empathy Teach us to share the pain of our students and to be for them signs of your love in their lives. The 
the twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Not long before his death, Jesus was transfigured before his disciples, confirming his identity as God's Son. But now he is horrifyingly dead, the victim of the most gruesome assassination. Surely his disciples were confused. Surely some doubted who Jesus really was. No wonder they fled the scene. Jesus' closest friends affirm for us that doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is part of it. Jesus, we cannot reason our way into understanding that which, by definition, unreasonable, death, cruelty, injustice, happen in our schools and across the world. Guard us from confusion, doubt, and fear, we pray, and give us the faith we need to accept your mystery. Christ, she saw with life not failing all her anguish unavailing, saw him breathe his very last. The Thirteenth Station Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is dead. His body hangs on the cross, limp and lifeless, until at last it is taken down and placed in the lap of his mother. Mary can do absolutely nothing to change the events of this day, but in her helplessness, she does not withdraw in defeat. She clings to her son. By her example, may we learn to do the same. Jesus, as teachers, we sometimes face challenges that leave us at a loss. We worry that it's beyond our power to make a difference for our students. Show us the example of your blessed mother and teach us that when we think of nothing else to do, we can hold fast to you and you will always lead us forward. The Fourteenth Station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Death without burial was the intended end for the crucified criminal, clinching his worthlessness as a human being. Joseph of Arimathea, then, shows courage in approaching Pilate for permission to bury Jesus. He shows tenderness in preparing Jesus' body with aloe, myrrh, and linens, and he shows respect in laying Jesus to rest quickly, as was the Jewish custom. This man about whom we know so little teaches us so much about being devoted to Jesus. Jesus, by your Spirit, may we, like Joseph, show our devotion to you through courage, respect, and tenderness. And may we, like Joseph, teach our students to do the same. Kindle in our hearts fervent devotion to you. The Fifteenth Station, The Resurrection We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All of our crosses, our pain, our sin, are healed, forgiven, and transformed. Christ is risen. Although his risen body bears the marks of his suffering, his pain is gone. Mourning turns into dancing. Grief turns into joy, despair turns into hope, and fear turns to love. The eternal dance of new life begins anew. 
Jesus, teach us how to celebrate your resurrection in all that we do. Thank you for bearing the weight of the world on your body and being, and for teaching us by example that in all things we will overcome, even in death. Help us take that message to heart and proclaim it to our colleagues, our students, and our families, not just at Easter, but the whole year through. Thank you for taking time to pray the Stations of the Cross with us here at Transfiguration of the Lord Parish. I know that we live in uncertain times. Each and every day we seem to get bad news, not good news. But there is good news, and we just heard it in that 15th station. Jesus is resurrected. We know that the end of the story is an empty tomb. And that's what we look forward to during these dark days. For families who might have tuned in as your pastor, I say thank you. I miss everyone. Both Father Jack and I look forward to the day. We long, we yearn for the day when we can reunite to celebrate the Eucharist together. Although our celebration of Palm Sunday, the Triduum, and Easter will look very different this year, we know that we are a resurrected people. And because we are a resurrected people, we are a people of great hope. My friends, never, ever lose hope. For you are resurrected. Thank you and God bless.